Hello everyone, welcome back to Flying Through the Helicopter Flying Handbook. So in this video, we're going to start on chapter two. This is going to be a multi-part video because chapter two is kind of long and there's a lot of information in it. So today we're going to start some of the basics. So if you look at chapter two of the Helicopter Flying Handbook, it starts out pretty much talking about things that you would know if you were a you know lowly fixed wing pilot about how do we get lift they talk about things such as the four forces acting on an aircraft and those four forces are lift which acts upward weight which acts downward drag which is perpendicular to those two things and then we have thrust. Now here they're making this distinction about this being the propulsive force of component of rotor thrust. That's just kind of a minor thing. Basically you have thrust coming straight up from the rotor and you tilt the rotor forward. Now of course this is exaggerated quite a bit and part of that thrust goes forward and that's what makes you go forward through the air. It opposes your drag and the rest of the thrust opposes the weight so you don't sink in your helicopter. It's really that simple. By the way, a test taking tip, when you look at some of the questions you might have on your FAA knowledge exam, they will ask you about things like when are these four forces in equilibrium? And the answer is whenever you're in unaccelerated flight. So you could be climbing, descending or turning but as long as you're in a steady state which pretty quickly almost any aircraft will get to those forces are in equilibrium so all of the different components are essentially canceling each other so we don't have any net acceleration now as far as how do we produce that lift we have our airfoil that's our rotors and air goes over the airfoil and that produces lift. Now in airplanes, especially small airplanes, they tend to have asymmetrical airfoils. Whereas in rotors, we typically have symmetrical rotors. There are a couple of asymmetrical rotors out there in particular, the rotorway helicopters, which are kit helicopters do have some asymmetrical blades that are available. I am told that they have really nice auto rotation characteristics, but I have not personally flown them. So I couldn't say for certain that that's true. So, you know, how do we get lift? Basically what you have have going on is the air is coming over your airfoil and the air that goes over the top it's sort of like these guys are best buds right you got a little air particle and it gets separated from its buddy that goes across the bottom the distance across the bottom is shorter so that air particle goes slower the one that's going above goes a longer distance so it has to go faster when air moves faster it lowers the pressure. So we have lower pressure here, higher pressure here. The difference in that pressure is what we call lift. It really is that simple. Now, how can we affect the lift? Well, we can change the airfoil, which is not terribly easy to do on a helicopter rotor, or we can change the pitch of these blades. So we can change this angle, which we call the angle of attack. It's the angle between the incoming wind and the cord line. So the cord line runs from the trailing edge of the wing to whatever is considered to be the leading edge of the wing. So they talk a little bit about Bernoulli and Bernoulli's principle and, and how all of that works. Obviously, a lot of this is not terribly necessary for you to completely understand just as long as you understand 
pressure is lower on the top of the rotor and higher on the bottom that gives us thrust same thing is true with the tail rotor tail rotor is just turned on its side we talk a little bit about drag there are different kinds of drag we have what's called form drag so form drag is dependent on the shape of something so if you have something like a flat plate it's not very aerodynamic at all and you will have a whole bunch of turbulence essentially going around that plate and then we will also have things that are a little bit better like a sphere you can see a sphere is still not awesome and then if we put a fairing on it then it gets a little better and if we put it inside of a housing it gets better yet let's be honest most of the helicopters we're flying the drag on the helicopter is not going to change that much if we put a couple of fairings on it. Right? Most helicopters that you're probably going to fly, especially if you're doing training, aren't terribly fast. You know, just yesterday I had a, an awesome little trip. I actually flew down to the Atlantic Ocean in a Schweitzer with the doors off. Uh, had a good time. I was surveying a site. You know, we were able to fly down the beach on the Atlantic Ocean with the doors off and the Schweitzer, which is an awesome training helicopter, but not the most speedy of helicopters. So it did take us kind of a while to get there and back, especially given that we had a nice 10 knot headwind for part of that trip. Okay, so we have different kinds of drag. We have induced drag. Induced drag is just drag that is created as part of the lift producing process. If you think about it, the more I increase that angle of attack, the more drag I'm going to have. And that's what we call induced drag. We have parasite drag. That's just, you know, this helicopter is moving through the air and it's going to produce drag. Induced drag goes up as the speed goes down because the pitch has to go higher on the blades. And parasite drag goes up as the helicopter speed through the air increases because it has to you know drag itself through the air it's actually a velocity squared relationship put those together and you can get a total drag curve so here we have a total drag curve you can see there is a minimum now for airplanes, they talk about this a lot and they call this point LD max. It's the most efficient point for the airplane where lift and drag, that ratio is the best. We don't tend to talk about that quite so much with a helicopter. So, you know, this is the most efficient point for the helicopter or any aircraft really. And again, they're showing you here What's this induced drag? It's the part of the lift that's tilted rearward. And what causes it? What causes it is increasing this angle of attack. And a little bit about different kinds of airfoils. Typically, we're looking at a symmetrical airfoil in a helicopter. Airplanes, non-symmetrical or asymmetrical airfoils depending on which term you prefer. One of the things that does happen with your rotor blade is it's going to twist. And why is it going to do that? You don't want that pitch angle to be the same at the tip where the thing is traveling a few hundred miles an hour, you know, maybe close to 700 miles an hour, depending on the helicopter as what it is going to be near the root of that helicopter rotor. So there's going to be blade twist and, you know, we can sometimes call this washout, if you will. So the pitch goes down as you get closer to the edge. And here's a little bit of that. So you can see near the root, where things are going slower and you know we haven't talked about this but 
the lift is also proportional to your speed squared. So here we're going pretty slow as this thing rotates. So we have a, a bit of a pitch. And then as we get out toward the tip, it's going really, really fast. And so that pitch has decreased at the tip. And they have a couple of diagrams showing you, hey, look, this is where you have different speeds over different portions of your rotor. And this is why we need that. Uh, another kind of introductory concept here, we have this thing called induced flow. During a normal flight in a helicopter, the helicopter sucks air down through the rotor, sucking this air down through the rotor and essentially exhausting it, if you will, below the helicopter. This is what causes the lift. So it's Newton's laws in action here. You know, I have an action of shoving this air downward and the reaction is it shoves the helicopter upward. As expected, those velocities are going to be highest near the tips because they're going faster. So those are some of the basics of the aerodynamics of a helicopter. In the next video, we're going to start getting into hovering flight and what happens in a hover with your helicopter. But that's all for this video. So I will see you guys in the next video.